All right. I am your stream host, Logic Hole, and we are having a few technical issues with our musical performance. So while we do that, we're going to have an encore presentation with all of our panelists from the previous panel. So please welcome them back. And here we go. One moment. Mm-hmm. All right, folks, welcome back to Indy 3. Hello. 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 Welcome back. We're back on the air. We are. This, this is, I guess, just the after chat. You know, uh, yeah, just, for just, the heck of it. Uh, just the after chat. Kick back uh, while I'm going to be frantically working to prepare our next show. <laughs> so I'll leave you to that, and I will. Go do that. So have fun, folks. This is the panel chat version of, a, of an encore. You guys just, <laughs> you chatted so hard, you brought us back out here here in the, uh, the text box. So good job. Good job, guys. <laughs> um, I think Kung Fu Jesus, by the way, has an interesting uh, point though, about how like celeb this like notion of LP celebrity can kind of screw with you, you know? Yeah. And I, 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 I do agree with that because I, I think some of the professional people I've sort of not directly encountered. I will say the people I've directly talked to who do that sort of thing for a living seem okay. But some of the like the second degree people or the stories I've heard, it makes you feel like, you know, at the end of the day, like you're nobody. You know that, right? You know what I mean? Like you're, it's like you're, the best you can be is a very big fish in a very small niche pond, you know? So yeah. I'll have you know that only rock stars answer to encores. So <laughs> oh, we are. Let me just tell you that how big up. my fish is right here. Well, I, you didn't let me finish. Was I was going to say excluding the five of us, apparently. So <laughs> you know that sort of thing. Oh my god! Even if I don't stream or let's play, can I still be like an honorary let's play rock star? No, now? I mean. Duh! You said us no. five. Yeah, all right, yeah, right, sure, whatever. I just followed you on Twitter. That's, that counts. That counts. I mean, all I've done is just like I do this thing where I get drunk and I stream myself playing Dragon Age, and that's that's fun. <laughs> We're technically yeah, yeah. a let's player. That counts. Yeah. That counts. Yeah. There you go. Boom. Woo. Frankly, that is the best method of doing let's play. I mean, you're... I can't imagine doing a sober. <laughs> you're gonna. Yeah. I just don't. Ugh. It seems like a lot. I. uh... I actually used to do this um, thing, like, the reason I actually kind of, like, became briefly internet famous for a while um, was because I would uh, find, I would, in college, I would just drink a lot and then uh, stream myself reading, like, really bad fanfiction out loud, um, which I don't, I don't know if, like, that does not count as Let's Plays, but uh, it was really fun. <laughs> Every Let's Player has had their fanfic phase. It's okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. For, for the downtime. I'm having phases I didn't even know existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. fan fiction. Why do people do it? <laughs> I think the, the, fan, the fans, I think, are the weirdest part of the whole thing. Um... And it, it, it's one of those it's one of those things that it, what kind of sucks about the sort of fake e fame or the re, maybe the real e fame I don't know but like as you get more and more people watching you I, I you find like you have to like watch what you say more you know because it has like more gravity to it than it used to, you know what I mean it's like you can BS with your friends at a bar and be like oh damn it um you know like <laughs> freaking people who you know do let's play for money there's there's yeah. whatever and then like a hundred people say like that and you're like wait 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 i, I didn't mean everybody i meant like that for, <laughs> you know what i mean like that kind of thing it's it's tough mm. yeah so I, I i i don't know i mean like i i don't feel like i, I feel like i'm d-list at best you know but like you can see people who like get in trouble with that sort of thing and things like that and it, it's just it's it's odd you know, you know what it is? It's like some people, um, and I don't want to name names or do anything like negative like that, but like almost like tell their fans and think like bad things like and without realizing, hey, you're encouraging people to go out and do stuff on your behalf without directly telling them to or maybe even realizing you're indirectly doing that. You know, yeah. 
it's like once you have that audience, you get this sort of responsibility that maybe you didn't even want. If that makes yeah. sense. That definitely makes sense. Because it's like right. all of a sudden, like, you need to be, like, that much more aware of, like, the fact that you're saying things that people are listening to. And, like, you do have an influence on people whether you want to or not. Yeah. Um, everything with a pretty low barrier to entry and uh, low effort LPs count. There's a lot of monkey see, monkey do. Uh huh. And I mean, so that's why Slender, everybody did it. <laughs> oh. And I mean, not just the games you pick, but how you do them, it disseminates really quickly, which is mm-hmm. a weird thing to, to think about sometimes. Right, yeah. And that, yeah, exactly right. It, it's, it's tough, I guess, when you're, when maybe that you end up being some sort of accidental trendsetter kind of thing, or people do things on your behalf, you know? I'm, I'm sure PewDiePie can't be happy with the fact that. There's like a bit a pretty big following of his fans. I think he's actually even told them not to, to be fair to him. That like go out and tell other Let's Players you cannot do videos on this game because PewDiePie already did it. You know? Mm-hmm. Not just not just him either. That, that happens for a few big name people. Like you're just copying off this person. Although this person, at this the person. same time, you can't not do it if you're trying to go for the same audience. <laughs> yeah. like, oh man, right. that, that Slender video was great. I have to see everybody else's Slender video. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Um... <laughs> yeah, God, that that was a weird thing that blew up. Like that Slender? Yeah, I mean... I'm pretty sure too. Um, the guy who made it did it in like a weekend. It was a definitely yeah. It was, I like, believe it was that. like a it was like a tech demo for like an idea he wanted to do. He wanted to flesh out, right? Yeah, he wanted something like, like that. It was like he was learning how to do Unity, and that's sort of what he came up with. Yeah, if I yeah. remember. Also, yeah. what's what's really strange about that is like on top of you know, Slender came out, and a whole bunch of people did like the same kind of LP of Slender. You know, there were people who made basically slender knockoff games and you as well and what's even stranger now is um like with uh bob i have done streams with him and voidberg and some other people um with some other horror games that have been released recently and there's been two instances of like decent looking like indie horror games like graphically and like production wise where very quickly you realize the game mechanics are just a fancier slender Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, guessing, I, I watched a bunch of like the LPs that you guys did of like all those horror games, and like they all just started to blend together after a while. Yeah. and I, I feel bad because like some of them, you know, seem like interesting premises. Like I, I mentioned, like when we were doing the panel, like Daylight seemed like a really cool idea, and then yeah. was was not like it just seemed like every other. Yeah, like game, having you know. procedurally you know? generated horror games sounds like a really cool idea, but when all you're doing is procedurally generating different hallways to find eight pages in, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because I think part of the issue, the part of the issue is, um, and this may be something that game development or horror game development, maybe in general, and LPs kind of share. A big problem is a lot of your audience with the disposable income tends to be very young sometimes. And when you don't have that sort of refined horror or humor palette, you know, which I know sounds like it was a completely ridiculous thing that just came out of my mouth. But um, <laughs> but when you're when you're young, right? And maybe I I'm, I'm the only person with this experience. But like, um, I saw the movie Candyman when I was like I forget like 13, 14, and I thought it was the scariest movie ever. And I watched <laughs> it again recently, and it's all jump scares. You know, and it's because I didn't know any better. Like to me, that was being scared, and that was a frightening horror movie. But then if yeah. you like watch more and more movies, you realize like how cheap jump scares are, and how it's just that quick reaction kind of everybody has. You know, but when you're young, it's like, oh well, you know, uh, I got, I jumped, therefore it's scary, therefore it's <laughs> scary. I'm yeah. startled. Mm-hmm. I, and then, I think. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, and then LP too. Like you see, like a lot of the. A lot of the super big one people like tend to have like a cartoony type of personality, and they say like poop and things like that, you know, and things like yeah. that, right? And but not <laughs> much, not much more than that, you know what I mean? And it's because it's like if you throw those softballs, it's like you tend to hit, you tend to cast the widest net to mix metaphors, really. Bad. <laughs> I yeah. know. I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> baseball fishing. I call Is that it. How that one? <laughs> 
Um, they no, they but, have those yeah. big nets to catch the uh, the flies, uh, so the people who buy expensive seats don't get hit. Yeah, there's a net <laughs> yeah. at ball games. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing, right? But I mean, like, so I think a lot of us now. Um, the one thing Slender does have going for it is you do have the atmosphere of stuff like the music and all that. And, I, and if you turn out the lights and use headphones, you can let yourself get into that sort of thing. But it's one of those things when you really break it down, it's like, all it is is like, ah, something flashed on screen, boom, that, you know. And yeah. the, the more horror kind of media you encounter, you know, it's like the more the more discerning you get. Which is why I've always liked the Silent Hill stuff because that's the kind of thing that stays with you. It's a bit like... Yeah, more, those games are... It's off putting. So like, scary. <laughs> it's so hard to put your finger on exactly why it bothers you. Whereas with Resident Evil, you know exactly why it bothers you. It's gory and it was fast jumping at you, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and a think... dog jumped out the window. Ah. ah. Right. <laughs> I, I, I think the, uh, the chat is also bringing this up, but um, there's a difference between startling you and terrifying you. Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I believe a uh, friend of the show, Devious Vacuum, uh, <laughs> once put together a video examining people's reactions of the emotion of being startled versus the emotion of feeling That fear. video is so good. Oh, no. I would love to. I would love to see this. Can I like? Can you? Will you like send me a link on Twitter or something? I, sounds... I will do so. Yes. Thank you. Let me look that, that sounds up. really really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I remember. Um, actually, that. That also sort of reminds me of like how big of um how big of a factor like audio is in games because I was just I was oh, just yeah. that just reminded me of like how uh, I there was a study done on like audio and like heart rate and stuff um for people who are playing I think like some like really soothing indie game like Flow maybe uh, and then like a racing game and then Amnesia and like while people had like they they did it with like the audio on and off and while people had the audio on like oh my god like their heart rate just like went like through the roof like i don't know and it reminds me of the the course party games which are like i don't think those games are great um because they're really like anime tropey and like sort of weird um but they have like the scariest audio i've ever heard like in games like the audio direction of those games is amazing like because they don't do jump scares really, like that often. Mm -hmm. It's just like, but oh god, the audio is so well done. Like, it, audio ugh. is huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, if you've ever seen Juon, like you know, like yes, kind of sticks with you from that movie. You know. God. Yeah. Um, or the Grudge is the um, the Sarah Michelle Gellar Western version, which uh, I don't know. I, I, I saw it second, so I probably didn't like it as I don't I didn't like it as much, but um, yeah, no, I. But at any rate, yeah, so, and then when you combine, I guess getting back to Let's Play, when you combine <laughs> the two of, like, crappy horror that seems good when you're when you're little, and crappy humor that seems good when you're little, you know, I guess that's the, the road to the to the, the golden cup, you know? So use Patreon so you don't have to resort to doing that. <laughs> just like the big wrap-up. <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think uh, just saying Patreon fixes everything is probably simplistic, but I, I do think that a lot of the problems with uh, just the sort of standardization, the stagnation, the uh, the lowest common denominator does come from it being a numbers game for your revenue and just cultivating a, a group that likes your stuff and is willing to stick with it for what it is. It, it right encourages a better product because you need committed people rather than a million people well that's the <clears throat> yeah, oh yeah no, no absolutely well that's, the, that's a, the interesting thing though too is that like where the line is where you say like what if you have videos you do to pay the bills and then what if you have video that videos you do that you you like you know what i mean like yeah uh, yeah like i know like total biscuit i know you he, he wants to he, he's a video game reviewer that's what he wants to do and he loves doing it he does Hearthstone videos, and he's he's very open about it. He's like, honestly, or and I know with his Terraria videos too, he was open about. It. He's like, I don't like doing these, but I want to keep doing this for a living. And this is, you know what I mean? When I, you know what I, you know? Yeah. If I can just keep saying, you know, you know, you know. Um, yeah, we'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess there's probably a point where you say, I hate myself, and I don't know, I don't know that that I certainly don't know that that's the point he's at at all or whatever. But like. There has to, I think there there are certainly times where it's like, look, 
my th- playing Dark Souls just is not for me. I don't like the games like this, but everyone's clamoring for it, and I know it'll get me views, and you just sit there and you kind of frown and put on your, your game face and try to bite through it. You know what I mean? Mm. Well, I guess what I'm saying is I don't think Total Biscuit dislikes playing Hearthstone, and I don't think he particularly dislikes uh, recording it. He probably just feels like this isn't what I really want to be doing, but it, I like it well enough that if it helps me do what I really want to be doing, fine. Whereas you have some people who are like, I know this, I don't even care about this AAA game really, but I know people, I have to do it because people will watch. Right. Yeah, I think I think that's an unfortunate side effect of the professional, in quotes, let's play. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, that's, it, we don't even have to put quotes around it. I mean, if you are doing it for, if it is your profession, I mean, you are quite literally a, liter- a professional let's player, right? Right, yeah. And that's, and that's the whole thing. I think that's the thing too when a lot of people say they want to be let's players it's like they it's like no you want to play video games like let's be honest here <laughs> you, do, you don't you don't want to sit here and edit things you don't want to look over stats and figure out what people are responding to because you do kind of have to do things like that you know you don't want to have to do new, new revenue streams you don't want to have to be on some days you're going to want to be home and you're like i just don't want to stream or record or something i just want to play punch out for Wii and just be happy but it's like shit uh, damn it um, it's like uh, my family's gotta eat though what am I gonna do you know what I mean that kind of thing it reminds me mm. that reminds me of like the, the Sony TV show the tester when oh, they're like Lord. get paid to play oh, video no. games guys yeah and that's exactly like why don't you just like feed them to birds instead like that would be a much more fun <laughs> position want to become like, a video game tester well first let's do our physical challenge <laughs> right yeah what? Yeah, I mean, do you remember the first uh the first uh episode of like that show involved like a dude like them like covering people in cockroaches and I'm like, you yes. know, this is still yes. better than video game testing. Like this is yeah. still better. That that's an unfortunate truth about the industry is video game testing is kind of bad. Well, I mean, and they and they drag <laughs> people into it by being like I do like, like how obviously <laughs> fake it is when they have to hype people up to get really excited. To see the third writer on Twisted Metal or something. (laughs) Oh, yes. Nobody knows who that guy is when he walks out, but they're all just hollering it out. It's great. Hey, man, no one north appeared one time. (laughs) Yeah, and nobody knew who he was except for one person. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's, I just love how they make it seem like, oh, yeah, you get to play video games all day. And it's like, uh, it's and like... have fun being locked in this room writing bug reports. Like, <laughs> lunch is never <laughs> goodbye. Uh, God. Well, um, Kung Fu Jesus has, uh, an, has a, a point that he made, not really a question, which is, why are why are video games so... Uh, terrible like or I mean, why are video game fan- <laughs> fandoms so terrible oh <laughs> um but <laughs> but but i think also to, and to bring it back where we are too why are let's play uh fandoms so so terrible oh man you would need a sociologist to I, talk on this i mean hey. <laughs> fandoms are just like I don't know, it's you get a lot of people whose only shared interest is one like piece of media or something together and like a lot of people are jerks and they will continue to be jerks yeah. just while all liking the same thing. And, and generally ugh. a lot of them I, seem to be very passionate about that one thing that they all share in common to the point where it's like, you know, they might get upset if somebody doesn't have the exact same specific opinion they have or something and mm. yeah. I know, you know that, um, it's, it's been, like, interesting, like, being a, a game dev who, like, I mostly use Tumblr to, like, promote my work and stuff, and I know that, um, like, the, the way that I kind of, like, pitched my game, um, which is, like, just for simplicity's sake, is, like, hey, it's, like, Flavor of Love and Danganronpa had a terrible, terrible child, and, like, that's what that game is, and I'm... Like, thinking about the fact that, like, my game could have a fandom one day is, like, both thrilling and terrifying <laughs> because people get really really scary <laughs> uh. did someone call for a sociologist I was, that's exactly <laughs> right <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. well, I, I, as a sociologist I have no input um. uh, no. <laughs> but the uh 
One thing, I mean, I could go on about why nerds are terrible all day, but one thing that I think is specific to LP fans as opposed to other nerds is that uh, they are right up against the creators of this content they enjoy, but the content is complete. It's like a complete, you know, wrapped up package. There's nothing to add, but they want to be part of a conversation with no way in. So they just sort of spew blank whatevers in a lot of cases and it just gets really white noise and dull and eventually that's accepted as normal and so you waver a little better and unfortunately a little worse than that normal and it man it's just not fun to read <laughs> <laughs> do you think that uh the effect of that can be altered by actually having conversations with the developers of the games I think that'd be great, yeah. Uh, even one thing you can do is just uh, audience participation. Like, you know, the good old days when the let us meant something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dang fools, I've never done a thread like that in my life. What am I talking about? <laughs> can, I, um, can, I, can I bring up something, by the way? Because I just saw David is Nito in the chat just said, have they addressed that the majority of fans are like 14? So I have, an un uh. I have, unfor I have unfortunate news to break to you about the internet. Um, a lot of them are mentally 14, but physically they are, they run the gamut there. If you, and just look at a vlog of any fan and you're going to find that 35 year old guy screaming into the microphone about <laughs> what have you, you know, sorry, I just wanted to interject that. No, it's fine. I, I, I think it's really, it's kind of weird when people, a lot of people insist like, oh, they're just like teenagers or like, oh, they're just kids or whatever. And it's like, no, actually a lot of like the, the people who get like super involved, like are adults, like, you know, it's, which makes it a little bit scarier. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and maybe it's one of those things where they put on a brave, mature face to the real world and then the internet world lets them be something else, you know? Which I'll, yeah. I'll even I'll even admit too because I will say a lot of people in my daily life they don't care about video games and it is nice to like have people to talk to every now and again and, be, and like joke around about I don't know Hideo Kojima or whatever and not have someone like stare at me like you know you are the biggest dork alive and <laughs> and also you're 36 you shouldn't be talking about this but um, <laughs> yeah I. Um, I've I think there's been a lot of discussion, especially as of late, about uh, toxicity in communities. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that at PAX East, there was actually a panel on that. Uh, yeah, there are, was. are you talking about the Patrick Klepek Zoe oh, Quinn yeah. panel? Yeah. I am. I watched that, and I recommend it to all the folks at home. Indeed. It was very good. Oh, I want to watch that, yeah. I am not, but, um... I'll go just look just it up. Ma mainline it to me in one minute so I don't have to. No, I'm kidding. Right. Is there a let's play where somebody talks over it maybe? And, no. Oh dear. No. <laughs> commentary on commentary. Right. Well, it's less about the source of negativity, at, but more accepting it, how you can move past it, and cre uh, uh, working against it, trying to put some positivity in its place. Mm -hmm. So it's more looking forward than, than backward in that way. Yeah, I think that's definitely important because I mean, like you know, once someone decides to be a terrible nerd, like that's already that's already done. Like you can't you can't be like, hey, have you considered like not being a terrible nerd five minutes ago? I don't know. It's just like making stuff better for the future is like something that I don't know. People should talk more about just for every space, I guess. It's uh it's it's a very it's a very tricky thing because I think a lot of people have very different ideas of what the sort of utopian for lack of a better term kind of community is. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, I, I, there even in even in the essay let's play forum, there's probably like eight different major opinions on what direction the community should go in. You know, mm -hmm. And there's general direction, things like that. But it, it's very hard to do a balancing act with any sort of community and say, like, this is getting everyone to agree this is where we want to go, especially when there's, like, no reason to listen to anyone kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, the, In other the, words, something, I, awful I very... play, the, the something awful left play community is huge, right? Like, I mean, yeah, or not it's, like, it's, I mean, it's, maybe it's, not like massive, but like, it's pretty big. So like, as far as I know, it's the, I big, think it's the biggest it's one. It's the biggest right? thing you could call uh, a Let's Play community. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. One yeah, thing we've I, there, there's a million more on YouTube, but it's just islands of people that aren't even familiar with one another, much less interacting. Right. <laughs> I know there's like let's play forum.com which but I don't think it draws uh the same audience by and uh there's the let's play reddit that doesn't do that and then uh then you get yeah like the islands of popularity cuz reddit's reddit's a weird site cuz then you have individual LP groups have their own subreddits but they don't talk to each other so it's yeah. like yeah I I don't know that I'd call that an LP community per se you know mm -hmm. It's it's like if I guess I'm saying if you have a subreddit to talk about Northern Lion and that's it, I don't know that I'd call that a let's play community, even though it's about a let's player, because we're not talking about let's plays or doing them or making them or promoting yourself or getting advice or what have you. That's just more about celebrating the one guy. You yeah, know? I, yeah, that doesn't seem like a community type thing. I'm like. I want to spread goss friendly gossip. That dude is the weirdest person in real life because <laughs> we were apparently on. A, I talked to him on a podcast. Everything was friendly and nice. We were on a bus together. I didn't. Re he saw me. I didn't see him. Did not say hi. R <laughs> Ryan, if you're listening, what the heck? <laughs> Sorry, I just, just want to throw that out there. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ma Moving Mazo, along, right. Mazo, no, no, no. I'm, that's total. I'm, I, I'm, I like Nora Lion. I totally joke around with him like that. Um, jerk. Uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody said Mazo Panga. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Even our community has little sub communities in the different LP groups, and that and that is absolutely true too, right? Um, I don't know. Is LPIRC still around on SI? I don't, know people... I don't know. I'm not actually sure. But then yeah, yeah, and you have people who you know. You know, kind of go into these different sort of like um, camps or whatever. You know, about certain things. There's like the strategy RP RPG let's plays where people, you know, they like nobody knows about because they're like just in their own kind of thing. You know, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Jesus yeah. Jesus says it's still there, but like no, but but and I, I don't know what but there's too much of a delay for me to follow that train of thought. So let's <laughs> move on. Yeah. <laughs> Keep rolling. <sighs> uh, they're still around, yeah. What else we got? Man, I don't know. <laughs> um, what do you call it? <laughs> I can, uh, let's see here. Northern Line. No, never mind. Let's see here. Uh, let's just the... turn this panel into you talking about Northern Lion for okay, sure. Like no. another, I'll, like I'll tell you, yeah. Let me tell you. Ed, I'll tell Ed's you everything the most about popular LPer who's uh, built a his fame on indie games. One in particular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's right? he's totally on topic. He is right. Um, yeah. He he's he's fascinating because I feel like on paper he should be the sort of let's player I hate. Um, and in fact, I started talking to him because I made fun of him on Twitter. Granted, I hadn't watched very much of his stuff, but I'm like, I said something like, that's as stupid as doing 600 videos of Binding of Isaac or something like that. And then he like replied, apparently he followed me or something because he was like, love you too. And so, um, but we started, we started talking and stuff. Um, I, he has, he's a very interesting person because he has, he seems to have a natural talent for a Let's Play. He's like very quick in coming up with things to say that are on topic kind of the opposite of me um <laughs> it's like but he can just keep going and going and going and, and you like watch even like his hearthstone videos it's a freaking card game and he just keeps going like all right yeah i'm northern lion everybody how you doing and i'll yeah, go as soon as i've drawn the beautiful work the beautiful work plus five range I don't see that though. This is a rare deck. There's a cold golden decks after that, but maybe a golden deck. There's only three more decks. The thing is, I don't know about that, but I can get five a drinkle board. If I'm sure that, oh my god, this guy's 1300 HP. I can't even stand it. So you know, it's like he just does that for like minutes on end. That was very it's impressive. Kind of impressive. I know you sound like an auctioneer. Like that's yeah. I'm if uh, if the whole LP thing falls through, he could sell cattle at the county. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, him or me? No, let's see. Um... you know whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. We're the There's a person. lot of county fairs out there. You don't even have to cross paths again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, it's funny, Yahtzee, actually, um, who is also uh, an independent game developer and a Let's Player, um, he has a series called Let's Drown Out, which is sort of 
nakedly saying like, you know what, we're not even going to bother talking about the game. At least we're upfront about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the past the past three registered talks, actually, in our podcast, we've experimented with putting game footage over it. Just why not? Um, I will say I don't like it because I really cannot concentrate on playing a game and talking about something completely different than the game. Mm. It's, it's, uh, that's it. oh. Would you do it again if you just had canned game footage? Like, uh, do a stream, take the footage from that, and then just put talk over it? I was, I was thinking about it maybe um but like the worst thing in the world is if you're trying if you're talking about we did a, a game recently we talked over it was a time travel game called shadow of destiny and the worst thing ever is oh, to wow. try to pon pontificate on time travel stories while you're playing spelunky because one, <laughs> one of them's got to give you're not you're not talking about like double feedback loops and double causality while you're like do, do i want the bomb bag or not you know what i mean you're just <laughs> You're just buying a bomb bag, you, and you, when you already had 99 bombs, because like you're trying to do other stuff, but you know, Northern Lion could probably do it. Then it's um, <laughs> one of the that's well, one of the he, things that he like... talks so fast because he has two mouths. He'll have like one concentrating <laughs> on the game and one on the podcast. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's one of the things about like let's play that seems like super like just streaming in general seems like super intimidating. Like for me is like. How can you like process like doing like playing the game and like talking about it while you're doing? It? I don't know. Like I when I whenever I do my Dragon Age streams, like it's just because I've played Dragon Age so much that I know like an absurd amount about that game, and obviously like it's really interesting to me like as like a narrative face dev. So I'm just like, let me talk about this game critically and also like drink a lot while I play this. But like, I, ugh, like I don't know. I feel like anything more skill based than like go talk to people and sometimes pause tactically like who would just that's so scary how do you do it <laughs> yeah whenever i've streamed i've always tried to shy away from things i haven't played much or is something difficult unless it's something i have down to like muscle me memory like a platinum game or something just because even when i one time i tried streaming uh nino kuni once oh I had never played that before, so I was like playing a, a new section that I never played before. And the RPG stuff, like the normal battles, was really easy to do because you're almost on autopilot for most random battles in an RPG. But then I got to like really simple puzzles, and I was failing all of them because talking and doing puzzles, even simplistic ones that isn't light four torches, is impossible for me. Like. Yeah. Ugh. Hmm. God, my. Uh, a while ago, um. I, I had done like a, a stream on like Halloween or something and, and people because someone bought me like Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper or whatever and I was like okay let's play this and um I just remember the entire chat laughing at me because I kept screwing up this like this super easy like pyramid numbers puzzle and I just like was on this for 15 minutes just like and then it, get, it kept getting worse because I kept laughing at everyone making fun of me in the chat. Like, it was like, Arden, please, like, just put the numbers where they belong. And, and like, even that was uh, too much. Like, just baby puzzles. Like, no thanks. <laughs> Control, because people are actually tweeting Northern Lion and saying, Sloopy is talking so much S about <laughs> you, right? <laughs> oh, no. What the... To... I think they want us to talk more about speedrunning. Um, I'm. Uh, you guys can do that. I, I what would you go like us to talk about speedrunning, folks? Because I, I mean, it's from a game developer perspective. It is pretty easy to to implement some support for that kind of esports. I know uh, Roundabout, uh, a game being developed by Panzer, who I mentioned previously, uh, will have like in-game timer support for speedruns. Uh, cool. and, and sort of like able to put in ways that you can uh, get through content that you would figure out uh, if uh, you've played the game multiple times. Hmm. Good for them. There, talk about <laughs> We have now talked about speedrunners again. Yay! <laughs> No, uh, I think streaming in general, though, is something we could talk more on that we didn't in, in the beginning. Uh, the way that one way 
uh, you can get that extra connection with an indie game is to have the the team like they're probably more available to like show up in streams and uh, rep their game with you more than say Kamiya would be because you know <laughs> dude's a bit busier and on the wrong side of the ocean you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I know that a lot of indie devs that I know and like, you know, being one, I guess, uh, like streaming, uh, you know, being like with left players, like, you know, talk about your game as it's being streamed is like, you know, it's easy because obviously you've been making the thing, so you can talk about it confidently. Um, and like, it, I imagine it would probably be really interesting. Like, I think that would be really cool, is like to have like more developers like you know doing streams just like casually chat about their game and not just in a way that's like you know interview pr speak i guess yeah something that like just finished today and was happening all this weekend during e3 was nintendo's whole treehouse stream yeah that was that great. seems that was a great idea and it, like even with some of the yes, goofy even oh some God. of the even some of the goofy technical mishaps they had every like, 99% of the time, everybody who is there talking about a game or their game seemed like they were just doing it casually and because they enjoyed yeah. showing it off. And it was a, such a better way to show off any kind of game than doing the normal PR, like, super scripted, tight little demo. Yeah. Like, I, I can't believe we neglected to mention it uh, uh, during the first hour, but the Treehouse stream is absolutely the best way, or po one of the best ways, to use an LP to promote your game. Like, it's a great model to emulate. Yeah. Am yeah, I, I mean, that, that stuff, like, the Treehouse stream got me more interested in, like, Nintendo stuff than I was in, I mean, like, any of the, the big companies, like, announcements, honestly. Because, like, they were just like, hey, look, it's people having fun, like, you know, playing stuff together. And, like, everyone seemed like they were genuinely having a really good time. Like, it, yeah. Like, there was yeah, no, I, like, forced excitement or, or whatever. They were just warm, friendly, and, and just really enjoying the games. And that's... Yeah. Who, who's this? The, the that... Nintendo's uh, thing all weekend. Instead of, like, having a big presentation, they had a digital um, event, like, streaming so, on Twitch. Nintendo of America has this branch called Treehouse, and it's basically this group of employees they have there who essentially trans... They, they're responsible for, like, localizing just about every single Nintendo game. Um, and you generally don't see too much of them except for like Bill Trinner or something in Nintendo Directs because what they're doing they can't really talk about ever. So this was like the first time they were ever like doing public stuff like at a convention and it ended up turning out really well. Like... Yeah. yeah. So what I'm wondering then is if Nintendo's uh, display with all of this streaming has been going so well, why they've made a policy now to not have streaming on their consoles. That was really strange. That that seemed like a... Because um, that was a thing Reggie said. Um, that seems like a thing that at a later point they would, they'll probably go, okay, we've changed our viewpoint on this. Actually, streaming is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> because it's just, it's just one of the things I... Because, you know, sometimes Nintendo is slow on some things. Especially with online policies and online interaction and stuff. So it's... I, I think they just haven't put two and two together yet. I don't, I don't know if they expected the Treehouse thing to go over so well either. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the exact quote, uh, one of the quotes is... That's different than watching Joe Blow's 30-minute stream, which may or may not have something <laughs> interesting. <laughs> So it might, maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a, they want more control over who's streaming it. Type the thing. message I, is like we put in effort to make this interesting and welcoming, but we cannot guarantee that everybody who buys a Wii U will do the same. Um, or, I'm sorry. Do you mind if I? I just want to interject very quickly. Um, I do have to get going, but um, it was oh, really right. sorry about that. Uh, it was really cool talking to everybody. Yeah, it was great to stuff. meet you. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Yeah, um, thanks for showing up. Happy Freak, I, I recognize the name from something, but at any rate, good good to meet you too. I don't think we've talked before. But, um, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, good. It's you, you know, honestly, when you're a big celebrity like me, you forget all the. <laughs> that's that's perfectly fine. I am scrubbed here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, take easy, y'all. Have a good have a good rest of your uh, the rest of the panel uh, after chat. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Good night. See ya. Night. See ya. Yeah, I, I hope that Nintendo like kind of cues in to uh, 
well, <laughs> the fact that like streaming is a good thing and you know yeah. people like it <laughs> not having streaming built in does not prevent streaming yeah, yeah no that's definitely that, true it's just like, you know you can make it so much easier that that also does put up a barrier though to keep you know joe blow from streaming it so maybe the people who right, know right. how to get captured stuff would possibly be more you know entertaining or informed people but still but still but at I, the same uh, time there's this program uh where video bloggers can work with Nintendo to create content that won't be viewed as copyright infringement. It's sort of like yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. this partnership plan. You know, and I... it, it looks like they want to have requirements in place so that it doesn't get nuts. You know? So... Which, I can, which I can understand. I, and they're a company with the might to, to make that stick. Even though Nintendo isn't allowing streaming... And doesn't want to put streaming into the Wii U. There's still, um, they still have some ways that they just started to implement of letting normal people share stuff from games. Like specifically, and what a thing that has worked out really well is Mario Kart TV. Oh my god, right. yeah. <laughs> just from all those Luigi faces, like oh, they're so great. Which they're was... clearly aware of. Yes, but like just. Putting that into their game was a really good move, just because just from Luigi himself, that probably sold a lot of copies. Like, yeah, for sure. I know especially that, um, since it like got on TV immediately. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know that um a big like I mean they've they've been sort of doing it like a little bit um more not as like streamlined I guess, but they've they've doing it with a uh, Tomodachi Life. Like, so obviously like they're really yeah. encouraging people to do like screenshot sharing and stuff. And, yeah. Um, so the the Wii U does have like. And they, they patched it in later, like a couple months after it launched, but yeah, they put they patched in like a pretty decent way to share screenshots from both the TV and the gamepad now. That actually works yeah. pretty well. With with the DS it's a little bit it's still not great. Um yeah. honestly. Like especially I mean they added a thing right into Tomodachi Life where where you just, you know, click a thing and then it takes you to the it like suspends the game and then takes you to the three DS image share thing. But then it's like you still have to like upload it with like all the hashtags they automatically like attach to it and stuff which like yeah uh, it's just a little bit annoying but um, yeah it's the, the functionality is a lot better in the wii u so far because you can you can go to like any image share, sharing thing and just hit upload and then go i want a screenshot from the tv i want a screenshot from the gamepad and it just works oh that I, sounds much better <laughs> it's, it is much better yeah than the 3ds i think it's very unfortunate that the barrier to entry for doing streams or let's plays of 3ds games is so high yeah yeah um, i i know that i was really interested because like i i'm really into fire emblem awakening um like I, i'm sure a lot of people who own a ds are uh, <laughs> but i i like would have loved to have streamed that game uh because it's i just can't so believe the dating sim designer like <laughs> fire emblem awakening <laughs> No, you. Oh my, oh god. my god! I mean, I I've literally Who never played a thought? Fire Emblem game before, and then people said, "But Arden, you can make these characters get married," and I was like, "Excuse me, like <laughs> buying my copy day one now, and uh, now I'm like in love with that game, and now it's actually made me go back and like be interested in playing some of the older Fire Emblem games." Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, you know, disappointed in the lack of like cute children, but whatever. Like, it's still, they're still fun, but. uh but anyway, like, I would have loved to have, like, streamed that and, like, talked about it, because I just think, like, a lot of, like, the narrative in that game is so great, but, yeah, like, it's just 3DS, like, capture software stuff is, like, ridiculous. Isn't it just, like, one dude who, like, installs so capture boards on 3DSs? I think like... there are multiple people who have done it in the past, but there's, like, one popular guy who makes, like, custom makes capture boards, and the process is you have to mail him your 3DS. Yeah, that's because I was and looking he, into it. I was like, will, no. Yeah, he will physically install the board into your 3DS and then mail it back to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just thought you know, since we're talking about Nintendo's kind of strange policies on certain things, but not on other things, you know, like trying to bring this back to indie games slightly. Yes. <laughs> it's, it hasn't been... Nobody ever really points it out, but, like, Nintendo has become, like, really supportive in indie games in a lot of ways. Yeah, like, their, uh, their they have a, package yeah. was great looking. So they have a huge amount of indie games, like, a huge wave that was announced, like, maybe six months ago or something that's slowly starting to come out like shovel knight and all those things like even little things now they have like they have html5 support and i think they're also they're either working on it or they already have unity support 
And they're like, I don't think they have any sort of licensing fees either to do stuff for their for the Wii U, which is nuts. But yeah, I, I know that um there was a Kickstarter that just recently concluded for a game called Omori. That's like an RPG maker, oh, yeah. uh, like horror sort of game. Um, yeah, not, not necessarily horror, but it, I mean it's something. Um, but they one of their stretch goals was 3DS support. Um, yeah. So I mean, and they got it. Um, so like I'm really interested to like see how that plays out. I know it'll be like an eShop thing. Um, you know, not like an actual cartridge. Uh, but like. That'll be really cool. Like that'll be a really interesting game, like to have on 3DS. Um, you know, because I there's nothing like that in the eShop library right now. I think. Uh, yeah, and like anytime you see a Kickstarter for an indie game now, at some point there's always a stretch goal for the Wii U now because it sounds like it's fairly hassle free compared to a lot of other things. Well, yeah, I mean compared to something like like Microsoft's uh, indie yeah. process yeah. is just I mean... a nightmare, honestly. Like. <laughs> It, from what I hear, I mean, I don't have first-hand experience, but it's easier to get on some of the consoles now than even on Steam. Yeah, it, um, yeah. Greenlight is not fun. Like, they are not... I mean, I know that they, Valve has said that they want to, like, phase out Greenlight, but that's not going to happen until they figure out a new solution for what to do, like, with all, you know, their like, stuff. Because, like, Valve is huge, and they can't be, like, curating everything, I guess. But, but like, Greenlight doesn't work at all. Um, yeah. Everybody here loves Roundabout, right? We're, we're all yes. Roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> Roundaboutgame.com. It yes. took them forever to get uh, to get greenlit. Like when they were already on uh, Xplic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like there's some other notable things that took a, taken a long time to get on to get greenlit too. Like La Mulana of all things. Took yeah. Forever, if, if I remember correctly. I mean, it, yeah. It's that was only. Yeah, that that did take forever. Um, and I, it's it's weird because their voting system is also very, uh, like, they're really not transparent about it. Like, no one really knows how that works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, like, the process by which games get greenlit and which don't. Like, because I've seen, you know, there have been things where, like, games have been at the, the very top of greenlight, like, for a really long time. And they keep not getting greenlit in, like, new batches. And then, like they will like months later or something it's just like how does this even work like does valve know how it works it's just <laughs> maybe not uh yeah uh. if you get your game greenlit that gives you a crate and you can trade a crate <laughs> <laughs> you have to put on a special hat to get greenlit <laughs> right uh yeah i mean it's it's definitely like getting easier and from what i've heard sony is doing a really good job with yeah sony is like Ever since last E3, they're, like, super supportive. Because, like, last E3, they had a huge segment where they brought out indie developers on stage and, like, yeah. gave their games just as much focus as any of the AAA games. And it was that nuts. Was, that was great. That was, like, super impressive for Like, me. the crowd cheered for Octodad, too. That was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really impressive. They did such a... Like, they did a really good job any with that. Crowd, any crowd that would not cheer for Octodad, <laughs> too, is no crowd of mine. And it's, <laughs> like... <laughs> they you just... <laughs> That's when you just like purge the stadium. You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, and it's like Sony still had a big, they still had a big focus on indies uh, this year. Like one of the games they gave gave a ton of time to is No Man's Sky, and if I remember correctly, that's an indie game. And then, yeah, that's being made by three people. Yeah, three people. Which is that's unbelievable nuts. when you look at that game. It's, it's so crazy. beautiful. It like, is on par with big budget games, basically. Yeah, and it's just like three people working on that. That's ridiculous. Ah. Oh. I love I, every time I think about that, I just get the sense of wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they, and then they they gave a lot of time to that entwined game too, um, which oh yeah, and that which, was like a like the yeah, first the, project the, of an art schools group or something. Yeah, which is the like, Paint Dragon crazy. game. Everybody loves Paint Dragons. I don't yeah, know, it looks pretty to me. I mean, I just thought it was interesting that like they they brought up a game that like is really not like a marketable title uh that most people would consider because it's like what do you even do in this i don't know look how pretty it is um <laughs> so i just thought it was cool they gave like you know a lot of time to that and they even did the the you know the cheesy it's out now thing like for a <laughs> yeah. game which was you know weird but cool also it was really weird because like last e3 microsoft didn't have like any focus on indie games sony did and it was crazy Microsoft had a little bit more of a focus now. Just they just had a big like de like a reel, showing short clips mm. of indie games. But it was really interesting just to see like they show just that short reel and 
just from that, like on Twitter and other people's reactions, everybody was like suddenly way more interested in those indies and like anything that had been shown up to that point. Like people saw like five seconds of Cuphead and they were yes. like, what was that? My entire timeline was just like, what's Cuphead? <laughs> what is Cuphead? <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, I mean, people just need to, I want these people to learn and be like, look at what people find the most interesting. Like, look at this. You could, yeah. Like, even just from a money perspective, like, look, like, no one's gonna care. Even the people who like Battlefield are not gonna care if you, like, shorten your Battlefield clips a little bit to add more indie games in. Yeah, like, it's just... Please if... do not overestimate people on the internet and their ability <laughs> True, to complain. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just... It, it's, it feels like it's very slowly happening. And it's something I wanted to see for the last couple of years where... Um, because, you know, AAA games keep getting bigger and bigger and, like, more bloated. Like, there's there's that talk about how um, Destiny has, like, a $500 million budget. But, <laughs> but apparently some people are saying that part of that is, like, a marketing budget spread across the 10 years they're planning for the Destiny franchise or whatever. What? So Lord. They're talking about how they want to have Destiny go for, like, 10 years as a franchise or something. It's like how Sony, when the PS3 first came out, they said they wanted the PS3 to go on for about 10 years. They almost have, too, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, but... That's, that's just ridiculous, though, the idea that, like, every new IP needs to be the start of a franchise. Like, it's yeah. gonna be a, It's a 10-year like, franchise where you just shoot aliens, right? I, yeah. That's the, like, that's the one. It's, it's like... like okay. I'm, I'm sure that Watch Dogs 2 has already, like, been greenlit or, or yeah. whatever. It's just, like, everything has to be, like, like there was, franchise. I don't know. There was a talk, like, even before... Like, right around the time Titanfall came out, there was already talk from, like, some sites that Titanfall 2 was already in talks or maybe in pre-production. You know? Yeah. Um, but I feel like the realization in the industry is very slowly happening, and it's something I wanted to see since, you know, AAA games are getting more bloated. I just want... AAA games are still pretty cool. You know, every once in a while there's one that comes along that's, like, absolutely amazing, and I still love playing yeah, AAA like like games. A... It's just... There's plenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's enough to last you, at least. Yeah, they're just... <laughs> I, it's slowly happening where it's tipping a little where there just needs to be more of a balance between the big and the the bigger and smaller games like you don't see too many like middle middle of the road yeah that, that makes me games. kind of sad that like mid-tier like studios have sort of like disappeared um yeah more or less like i mean i it just it makes me kind of sad because a lot of really interesting games came out of studios like that um so it, it like you know that you still it kind of like gave you like really good things about both worlds where you could have like the indie sort of like freedom to it like experiment and do interesting and weird things but also you got like a lot of financial support like to yeah. do those things with which is important um and then yeah like it seems like they've just sort of been like there's only i, I can only think of like a few studios that i would i would maybe classify as like mid-tier now like yeah and you know they've just been really like you know, they had, like, really successful stuff, but, you, you know, not every, like, mid-tier studio is that way. <laughs> yeah, and it feels like when you don't have mid-tier studios, like, there's some really good things that came out in the past that would not have happened. Like, I don't think... I suppose this is mid-tier. Like, I feel like Katamari would never have happened. Yeah, no? yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say Double Fine as another yeah, example. Yeah, Double Fine, Fine too. One. Double Fine is a great company for mid-tier games they've been experimenting a lot with uh yeah. how they're doing stuff yeah I, I i'm a huge huge fan of double fine uh like uh yeah and i really like how they've been just doing stuff lately you know like making smaller downloadable games like more often instead of like just holding on for like one big thing and stuff and like having their teams you know do a bunch of different things at once and i mean like it seems to be working out really well uh like so far so i hope that they keep like doing cool stuff yeah they've they've also been trying uh a little bit of publishing for uh smaller indie devs uh sort of use their uh resources to give them a boost uh i know they do uh amnesia Fortnite, where they just stop all their projects and try and create a new idea uh, over the course of 14 days. Yeah, I, I I love their Amisha Fortnite like videos and stuff. I always really like look forward to that because it's really yeah. inspiring. Um, like as a developer, and I mean, I just feel like everyone should watch those if you're like into you know making games at all because you can you can learn so much. Ah, oh, it's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, it, it's great that they managed to partner up with a group so that you can actually see the development process going on with them. Mm -hmm. And instead of a day one LP, it's like a day negative 200 LP. <laughs> what? <laughs> you just really get to the punch. You, you, you beat everybody there. <laughs> played this guy, I played this game before it was even done. God. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right. That's one thing, that's one way I've seen people describe the treehouse going back like a half dozen topics is uh, like uh, Project Giant Robot, which is the best name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're watching like a negative six month LP of, of this so about robot it. lumbering around. That game totally looks... sniped those guys. That game looks really l rough and clumsy right now, but it's still, the basic idea still looks really fun and I really can't wait to see what that evolves into. Same with the, the little tower defense thing. Like, I I checked out a tower defense forever ago, but that one made me interested for some reason. Pro Project <laughs> Guard, yeah, that looks yeah. really cool. Maybe yeah, it's I, just the robot birds, I don't know. <laughs> I just the think birds cool are that, great. I just think it's cool that like now more um, larger developers and studios are actually like showing people like parts of their development process, um, which I think is like a really important thing that like people don't do enough of, because I mean, it, it sort of like almost stops people from getting into games. Like, I remember when, when I was little, like, I would, you know, play video games and I, I didn't even, it literally never occurred to me that, like, you could make them. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. I mean, obviously I understood that there had to be, you know, someone making these, but it never occurred to me that that was a thing that I could do with my life if I wanted to. Um, just because, like, I, I had no idea about any of that process at all. Um, and then, like... As I got older and and stuff and started to learn more, I was like, "Oh my god, like I could do this!" But it, you know, if I'd had that realization sooner, like that would have been great. Um, and I just think it's important, like you know, for a ton of people, like get more people into making games and stuff, like have them realize, mm -hmm. like this is something that I could feasibly, you know, do. It's, so it's cool, like to see bigger studios like encouraging that sort of attitude. That also makes me really happy right. that one of Nintendo's projects right now is Mario Maker. Yeah! <laughs> that looks so great. I think it's cool that uh, Nintendo is showing some things that I guess are uh, 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 sort of seen as the indie spirit, like Project yeah. Guard, Project Giant Robot. Uh, they, they seem to be taking one idea, one mechanic, and just exploring it and making something nifty and not necessarily something, you know, polished and gritty and marketable. Mm -hmm. And the really cool thing is they have Shigeru Miyamoto, the biggest name designer in the history of games, making this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they could be plugging him into anything to get extra hype, but no, he's going to make the, the tower defense game where you play a dozen cameras and a bird will steal you. <laughs> it's <good. laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's really great. I, I love, like, that approach to game design a lot. It's just, like, you know, take this one interesting mechanic and just see all the cool stuff that you can do with just that one thing. Because, like, I mean, it makes me think of a lot of, like, bigger, like, AAA games. Like, uh, Grand Theft Auto V had so many, like, there was a full golfing sim in yeah. Grand Theft Auto V. And, like, it was do you pretty need decent that? too. Like, yeah, like, I mean, it works and stuff, but it's like, do you need this? Like, after a certain point. And then, like, all the. Um, I'm actually finding, like, I, with Watch Dogs, um, that the most interesting part of Watch Dogs is the multiplayer for me. Um, yeah, the whole invasion thing. The invasion thing is, like, yeah. really cool. Uh, and I kind of wish that they had just gone with, like, that as a premise and just, like, expanded on that instead of, like, the, the, the entire rest of the game. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I will, you know, there's actually one other part of Watch Dogs that could have been its entire own game, and it would have been awesome, and maybe even better, like, as a standalone thing. And that was that weird, uh, like, E-Trip minigame where you turn into a giant rampaging robot spider. Uh, yeah. That looks way <laughs> better than the actual game Watch Dogs. <laughs> and that looks actually genuinely cool. Like, if that yeah. were, like, a smaller, like, standalone thing, I would just buy that. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, I mean, I kind of think about, like, even, even I feel like Metal Gear Rising sort of did it with, like, you know, the whole, like, coming, uh, uh, wow, uh, Kojima is his name, I just, <laughs> um, yeah. was talking about, you know, the idea of, like, cutting things as, like, that's, like, the mechanic that he's going with, and I yeah. mean, that was so much fun, <laughs> like, 
So it's there, just, there were not enough watermelons for my taste. True. There should have been like a one <laughs> watermelon yeah. per stage minimum. Yeah. So on that topic, do you think that uh, indies, uh, as opposed to AAA, are in a better position to identify a core mechanic and then explore it fully? So I think with the bigger games, there. I'm almost sure that like a lot of devs it, for AAA studios and stuff do see that stuff and want to focus on that. But because you know those bigger games being made more is like a product, or you know there's more of a committee designing the whole thing, so there's mm-hmm. a lot less focus. I think that's many times at least that might be what keeps those bigger games from focusing on like a core mechanic, because mm-hmm. like. With Watch Dogs, like, one of the core things, aside from, like, that cool invasion part, was, like, hacking. You know, just being able to hack a whole bunch of different things to affect the environment to, like, assist you in all the other things you do. Um, and when that game got delayed by, like, half a year, it was, yeah. they basically said when it got delayed, it was so that they could fill the game up with more stuff. Like, all those little E-Trip mini-games and all the extra side missions and fluff in there was from that six months they delayed it, so it could feel, I suppose, more like a game worth $60 or whatever. Mm. Uh, I just have so many problems. The idea of, like, time equals, like, pricing for your AAA games, like, the amount of hours yeah. you put in. Like, I don't know, it's just it's just bad. But, like, thinking about, like, that question, it's actually, like, kind of a complicated answer because I think that, like, indie devs can... I think bigger studios, like, actually, yeah, like, tying in the, to Watch Dogs and stuff, I think even bigger studios with, like, good management can really suffer from, like, feature creep and, like, scope yes. stuff. Like, feature creep is a huge deal, like, even for indies. I mean, like, I had to, like, throw out my, my first ever, like, visual novel idea because, I mean, the dating sim version of feature creep is, let's put more kissable characters in here. And then I <laughs> had a, then I had a cast of 16 people and was like, wow, I cannot write branching paths for all of these. Um, but... You know, it happens a lot with AAA studios, but then the problem is that you kind of have the resources to follow through on that, uh, which, like, mm. is not always a great thing. Like, I don't think, you know, you, you don't need a lot of that yeah. stuff in there. Um, but with Indies, like, it can be hard because you might have, like, a really cool idea for, like, a central mechanic, um, but you, you might not have, like, the financial support to be able to, like, explore it the way you want to. So it's really hard. Um, like, you know, obviously there's, like, drawbacks to both things yeah i guess it's funny talking about the feature creep thing because i i've never really made a game when i was younger i used to play around with rpg maker and stuff like that which Mm -hmm. people joke about rpg maker but like for like a beginner's tool on like how to figure out how to make games that thing's actually pretty great it's great for like figuring out like understanding like the basics of like scripting yeah, I there mean, there has been at least one showcase in this uh, digital event just of RPG Maker games. There's yeah, like, yeah. People are doing really interesting things with it. Especially a lot of Japanese developers are doing like incredible things with RPG Maker and like telling great stories. And I like you know my my friend Will O'Neill made a uh, actual sunlight in RPG Maker, which was like yes. wonderful. And then uh, I know that uh, always sometimes monsters just came out, which was an RPG Maker game. Um, and like people are are doing great things with it, uh, and yeah. it's, I think it's a really valuable tool because it you know like it makes game dev more accessible to people, and like, yeah. that's so important. And uh, like, there's yeah. a fairly well known indie game that was made with RPG Maker, right? To the Moon. That yeah, was RPG Maker. Yes. Yeah, is, is great. To the Moon was RPG Maker. Uh, Hotline Miami was Game Maker. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm making my next game just in, in RenPy, which is also, like, a great resource and stuff. I'm just really happy that there's so many, like, great content, like, creation tools out there now, like, for developers to use. Because, like, I'm not I'm not a great programmer, um, like, at all, but RenPy is easy enough that, you know, even even I can make something in it. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually yeah. a really good time uh, to be an independent developer because there are so many tools that you can choose from. Yeah. yeah, like I've I've also messed around with um stencil, I think before mm-hmm. the the thing that lets it like it has support for doing your own code and stuff, but also ha- it works with like code blocks, so yeah. you're like snapping all these pieces together and like I haven't done too much with it, but I was able to make like a simple platformer once and that felt great. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it feels amazing when you make, like, your first, like, finished thing. Even if it's, like, the smallest little, like, thing in the world. Even if you're like, I made this tiny little platformer. But, like, it feels so good because you did it. And Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like, a great feeling. What I was actually going to say before I brought up RPG Maker was, like, uh, the whole feature creep thing. Like, I haven't really... I've had a couple... I've toyed around with a couple ideas for, like, a game before. But uh, even when just thinking about the idea, I've already had feature creep just by thinking <laughs> about it. I yeah. really want you to make that game you were telling me about in high school. I don't know if you even remember <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, but I forget what it was called. Where the, the, the heroes fall in a deadly game of Plinko. Yes, yes. There, there's like <laughs> oh, a giant nice. like Plinko thing like in The Price is Right and yeah. Oh, I, I forget the name of that I game. I believe but... it was called Bert's Epic Quest. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. It was. My whole idea back in high school was it was an RPG about a very old man. Like it was like a, a grumpy grandpa or something. I don't know. <laughs> it was really hilarious to me when I was eighteen. I'll help, I'll um, help you make this. We'll make they, oh true. man. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Near totally stole the idea. One hundred percent. If I remember correctly, Bert was a ghost exterminator. Also, <laughs> <laughs> awesome profession. I don't know. I'd play I, this. I don't Hi, remember folks. too much I about need that. To jump Hi. in here. We have fixed our technical issues that our musical guest Josh Welchel uh, was having in streaming oh, door service, and oh, cool. so this is your I'm going to say three minute warning. Then we're going to take a five minute intermission and have him take over, and he'll be broadcasting from his location. Sound right. good, everybody? Yeah. All right. Thank yeah. you so much for your your time and help. It's been a fantastic conversation, and you're all troopers for going this long. We really appreciate yeah, this it. Is, I'm just having fun. <laughs> so glad to hear it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This was a great time, and goodbye a second yeah. well, time. Well, I'll yeah. turn the time back over to you for a few more minutes, and then we will uh, go as I just described. Thank you. Uh, I guess we have enough time to like uh, throw out any promotions we want to do. Uh, I'll take this. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, if you like my opinions on things, uh, you should follow me on Twitter, at Sproutella. Um, also, if you like my opinions on narrative and stuff, you would probably love my new game. Uh, just coming out in 2015, is called Date or Die. Uh, it's gonna be a visual novel, and, uh, it will probably make you cry oh. a lot. Oh, 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 I have a really quick question. Yes. About Date or Die. Yes. At any point in Date or Die, do you get the same voice clip from Skate or Die? Um, I'm kind of like... Date really or could... die! <laughs> I kind of like want to get a voice actor to do that for me, um, because I, that's just really important to me to have that in there. Uh, <laughs> Poor feature. <laughs> I'm so glad that when I like finally like announced the game officially and stuff, and you know, was like, hey, here's yeah. my next game, it's called Date or Die, everyone was just like, date or die, dude, you either date or you die! <laughs> <laughs> yes! This is exactly the effect I wanted to have. So... Yes, so that's my that's my thing. That awesome. Y'all should y'all should look out for it. There's a website, by the All way, right. I should mention that. It's datordiegame.com. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, for my stuff, um, I have a website called chipandironicus.com. You can also find those I same videos. I sort of also have that up website a little yes. bit. <laughs> oh. uh, chipandronicus.com or if you just want to see our videos straight on YouTube uh, it's Chip Cheesem LPs not LP that was an old account that lots of copyright stuff anime um, so yeah if you want to check our Let's Plays you can find them at those two places our website has more stuff on it than our YouTube channel things that we cannot post on YouTube because of copyrights etc nice. um I, I don't really have any projects in the works right now, but you can follow me on Twitter at CompuFreak99. Uh, I have lots of things in the work, but uh, that's about it. Okay, uh, you can, like, like I mentioned, I'm also on ChipandIronicus.com and that YouTube channel. However, if you want to look at my uh, personal stuff, I also have a Twitter at GenIronicus, that's G-E-N underscore Ironicus. As well as um, Let's Play the 13th Age. You can find that at 13questions.tumblr.com. There's an episode guide. You can uh, start from the beginning, which ain't so hot. The beginnings of things never are. Or you can jump <laughs> in currently. Uh, it's, it's fine by me either way. And if you really liked the uh, Patreon talk and you just really wish you could contribute to one, uh, <laughs> I, I can point you to, to one of those too. 
nice. All right. Oh, I've been told to also pimp uh, the Scottish Drop Let's Play Consortium. Uh, lots of friends, lots of cool people. Uh, nice. Also, I guess since Slow Beef isn't here, I'll plug for him. His Twitter is uh, at Slow Beef, S L O W Beef. Uh, you can also find him as half of Retsu Pure, R E T S U P U R A E. That's a Twitter account, also a YouTube account. Uh, and yeah, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now that we have like one minute left, I'm going to pitch my indie game. Uh, <laughs> it takes place in the year 2147 on the planet Mars. And you play as this man in green armor. He's, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. Uh, he's, a, he's a space marine. That's a marine in space. <laughs> now, at one point, uh, a horrible a, a science experiment goes wrong. And this portal opens. And it's actually portal to hell. Now, that's a lot really? of trouble for our, for our intrepid space marine. That's a whole heap of trouble. And he's going to have to get to the core of hell and fight the cyber demon. <laughs> Cyber oh demon, you say? I've never uh, heard yeah. of this before. Uh, well, <laughs> well, will I be able to customize my gun with Connect support? <laughs> uh, no Connect support at the moment, but we're thinking um, about it. Does it have Twitch connectivity? Uh, yes. At any point, you can summon the Cyber Demon to kill me instantly. It'll be alive. <laughs> <laughs> what's the What's the hashtag I should use for tweeting about this? Uh, it's can... Gunfeels. That's G <laughs> Gunfeels? All right. It's G U N F E E O L S. Gunfeels. Uh, you can join the conversation at hashtag. Uh... <laughs> hashtag join the conversation. <laughs> uh, great. <laughs> My actual indie game idea was a corporate espionage strategy game. There you go. I'll make it. Nice. <laughs> I'll help you make it even better. Oh, man. You can do it. Just let's play development, aka yeah. drinking a lot and wondering why doesn't this work. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's do it. It'll be a blast. Make games. New series. <laughs> Get hyped. Yes. <laughs> oh, now I feel bad. Did we wrap up too early? <laughs> no, no, we're fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, thank you to all of our wonderful wonderful guests here tonight. We are going to wrap things up here, and then, like I said, we're going to hand it over to Josh Walchel, who is going to be broadcasting from a different location, so we'll have a short intermission while we orchestrate that handover. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Please stay around, stick around for this live musical performance. It's going to be pretty incredible, and I hope that you all, all enjoy it. Uh, Josh will be closing out our performance for tonight, and then we will see you all in the morning. Well, I say the morning. We're going to start broadcasting again at 1 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow for day five of Indy 3. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yay! Woo! <laughs>